Alrighty. So recently there was a really cool tilt shift effect video um, posted on Reddit, I think, um, and then the 80 level picked it up. Uh, so I thought I'd make a tutorial on how to do that, um, or how I would do that. Uh, apologies if the person that did actually make that video also made a tutorial on it. Um, so I'm in the city sample right now, uh, sort of like a bit of a preview on what it'll look like. Um, there's a few things that don't work. There's a couple of reasons this won't work in runtime, um, and mainly the cars don't in the city sample don't adhere to the time dilation uh, settings for some reason. Um, or some of them do, some of them don't. I don't know. They're, some of them drive really slowly, like that red car driving through the intersection there, but others just sort of zip on past. Um, uh, and then because the traffic lights are sped up, I've just created an endless traffic jam because the cars aren't sped up. Um, but uh, rendering out videos uh, will be fine. Yeah, look, the cars just like, they get past that crossing and then just actually go to their correct, the time delay, dilation speed. Anyway, um, in a rendered video, that will not be an issue. I'll show you how to fix that. So um, let's get stuck into it. So I will exit play mode. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. So what you want to start off with is the city sample. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to delete that and close that. Alrighty. So we've got the city sample here. Runs okay-ish on the 3090. <coughs> the screen. I think if I turn the screen percentage up to to 100%, it doesn't run as good. No. Traffic's going to be the killer. So there's a few things. What we're trying to do is create what's called the tilt shift effect. So um, the tilt shift effect is actually achieved by a what's called a tilt shift lens. Um, and that works uh, by actually tilting the lens. Um, it sort of changes the focal plane and allows you to get really shallow depth of field even at incredibly long distances. So if you know anything about lenses, um, having something really shallow depth of field that far away from the lens is damn near impossible with a regular lens. Um, so we're going to simulate that in Unreal. Now, uh, we can't simulate the tilt shift effect itself, um, the way light moves through the lens like that, because that's not really... Uh, I'm sure Pixar can do it, but uh, I'm, no, I'm not aware of any other 3D program that can do it, so we will be uh, cheating it a bit with the cine camera. So what you want to do is first try and find a nice angle. Um, it's sort of, this effect invokes things like SimCity, so uh, up high I think works. Um, now um, I can go into world partition and we can like just load half the city. Alright, uh, probably a mistake trying to load that many cells, but now I've got a bit more of the city loaded, so I can uh, glitch my way to an interesting looking location. Um, I'm going to draw a blank on a shot here. Okay, there's a lot of people around here, so I reckon looking down at this square here, get the sun shining through, that should be pretty decent. All right, so going to place a cine camera. That is not a cine camera. Okay, let's change the... Right. Let's just select a lot of that and unload it. Yeah, that works a bit. That's a bit faster now. All right. Cinematic, Cinecam, Actor, like so. I'm going to go ahead and jump into it. It's going to be the last one. Also going to grab Cinematic Mode. Here we go. All right. Where's the square here? Um, and I said I wanted the sun shining through, so probably this side and up a bit. Maybe something like that. All right. So... Now we can't um, we can't simulate a tilt shift lens, but we can simulate what a tilt shift lens does, which is a very shallow depth of field. So what I want to do first is go into the lens settings of the camera and swap, change the minimum f stop to zero. Um, next thing that's going to make us help help us is a larger lens. Uh, sorry, a larger sensor. So the bigger the sensor, the shallower the depth of f field inherently is. Um, that's why, like, uh, a camcorder with a half-inch sensor doesn't really produce really 
nice depth of field, uh, but like something like your DSLR with a Super 35 or full frame sensor will produce a nice result. So we're going to take that to the extreme. I'm going to choose the IMAX 70 mil. Um, uh, I'm going to correct. I'm going to go th 70 by 35. So we're a two by one aspect ratio. Uh, yes. Uh, pretty common. Um, and we, I want to go really long. So maybe 120 mil. Um, that makes everything feel smaller and everything feels closer together. So um, wide le wide angle lenses, let's say 18, makes everything feel really far away. Like if I go to this car here, it feels like the car in front of it is forever away. But if I go to say 120 mil, it sort of compresses distance between objects. That car feels a lot closer. And if I keep going, let's say 800, um, which is going to be very difficult to <laughs> there we go now all the cars feel like they're basically on top of each other so that contributes to the effect now i've got to fly back to where this camera was there we go all right so we're going to go up high looking down you know what let's try 150 mil like so move it back now everything's going to feel really small close together. <coughs> I'll turn the focus back to manual. Like so, and I'm going to pick where we're going to have a lot of cars and people. So I think the intersection might be a good one to have focus on like that. Uh, or maybe just before. Let's see. <coughs> all right. And then all I need to do is now change the aperture. So I'm going to start as 0 0.1. No, not quite. So 0 0.01. Oh, a little too much. 0 0.05, no, 0 0.025, there we go, um, oh, maybe 3. You're going to have to look at some tilt shift, if you've got a tilt shift lens, that'd be even helpful, even more helpful, but you're going to have to sort of look at some examples of this effect. Oh, let's go that corner right there, that's a nice focal point of this shot. So, now what I want to do is go ahead and make some sequences, so I do have... Hidden somewhere here is a sim sequence folder, so this is this will be shot two animation, and I said animation level sequence, and we'll just say shot two. All right, go ahead and open that up, and I'm going to add the cine camera wherever it's gone. Cine camera, oh god, which one is the one I'm looking through? This one. Just uh, add to sequence cine cam. There we go. So now we've got our camera in a sequence. So. Two more things we need to do. Um, first, we are going to set the exposure to manual, as that's a good practice for cinematics, because uh, you just never know what. Negative eight. Oh, uh, make sure you untick apply physical camera, otherwise we're going to get the light equivalent of a 0 0.01 or 0 0.03 aperture, which... I don't know what that would look like, but bright, I would assume. Um, let's go six. The monitor, the black magic I'm recording on is a little brighter than my screen. There we go. Alrighty, the last thing we need is to achieve that animation look, that stop motion look that also helps with this effect. Um, we're gonna have to turn off motion blur. So, um, Believe it or not, no motion blur makes things look more like stop motion than a lower frame rate does. If you go through the Lego movie, uh, most things actually run at 24 FPS in the Lego movie because they got no motion blur, it looks stop motion. So uh, in the motion blur here, I'm gonna set that to zero. So we're not gonna get any motion blur. All right, so we've got shallow depth of field, fixed light, or fixed exposure, no motion blur. Um, go ahead and make sure um, the movie render queue is enabled, as well as I'm going to render in ProRes today. <coughs> I've done a video on rendering in Unreal 5, and I explain the difference between ProRes and EXR and PNG and JPEG and all that, as well as some render settings. So go ahead and watch that uh, if you'd like to learn more about that. So the last thing is sped up time. Now we can add a time dilation effect in here. Uh, where is it? Time dilation. And we could just speed this up. We could say like six times. Um, the problem is, like you saw in the opening, traffic doesn't work 
or does work and doesn't work. They sort of get out a certain distance from the camera and then speed up and stuff like that. <laughs> Annoying, very. Uh, so instead, what I'm going to do is set the frame rate to something really low. So I'm going to go custom here. I'm going to type 1S and hit enter. And so that's going to give us one frame a second, which is really slow. So when we play that back at 24 frames a second, that's going to give us 24 times real time, which uh, thinking about it, I probably don't want 24 times. Let's go 0. Point, uh, let's go 0. 0.5 instead, or two frames a second. Um, that'll give us 12 times real time. Um, it might still be too quick, I'm not sure. Um, let's try it. Uh, and then lastly, I'm gonna need to really up the frames. So 800, uh, oh God. Why is math so difficult at times? So 800 divide 24 will give us 33 seconds. So it's probably too much actually. I'll go 300. 300's blenders. Oh no, 250's blenders default. Oh well. Uh, really, you just need to up this value. All right, so there's a couple more things we need to do in this scene to make it usable. Uh, one, we need to change the game mode so that we don't, our camera doesn't spawn as the person and that would, because that would very much ruin the render. So what I'm gonna do is go into the world settings and on game mode override, you just wanna select game mode. Um, we'll override this anyway uh, in the movie render queue, but if you wanted to preview it uh, like I was at the start, then you're going to need that. The other thing is we're going to change the density settings. So um, if you have played this demo, you know there's like a menu and you can up the density. So we're going to do that. Um, now we'll, we can't in the middle of a render do that. Uh, so instead we're going to create a blueprint. So I'll make a new blueprint, actor, call it BP density, then city settings, and go ahead and open it. Let me put it on this screen, here we go. So go to the event graph, uh, I just want the event begin play, like that. Um, I'm gonna grab out a sequence, because we're gonna have a couple of things. All right, so we're gonna cast to actor, oh, sorry, no, get or actors of class. I got confused between class and cast. Alrighty, so here we're going to grab all of our spawner. Uh, no, not all actors, get an actor. Get actor, get actor of class. There we go, we only want one of them. So BP traffic, no, what is it? It's um, mass crowd, uh, mass crowd spawner. We want that one. I'm also going to want some traffic ones. Traffic, uh, BP, tr vehicle spawner, and BP, uh, traffic. we want the parked vehicle spawner, like that. So we want those three. So that's BP, um, what is this? BP, mass crowd spawner, BP vehicle spawner and BP vehicle parked or parked vehicle spawner. Okay, so I'm gonna plug those in. Then I'm gonna grab what's called scale spawn. Uh, scale spawn, scale spawning count. Um, these, they actually all have the same thing. Uh, this is a C++ class inherited from their parent, uh, so don't try and click on it because it's not going to take you anywhere um, unless you have Visual Studio installed, uh, but that is well beyond the scope of this tutorial. Uh, so we have uh, scale, so the default is one for everything. Um, zero is obviously going to give you nothing, and one is just going to give us what the standard amount is. So I'm going to actually change a few things. So I want 1.5 times the parked cars. Uh, I want two times the foot traffic. I also want two times the, uh, actually no, let's go 1.5 times the foot traffic and two times the cars. Because <coughs> cars make it interesting. All right, and that just happens on event begin play. That's all good. Uh, I can drag it in to my scene. I can just put it absolutely anywhere. Um, I'm gonna get rid of the old one. There you go. 
So there it is, BP density settings right there. I'm also probably going to... Why is there so many post-process ones? Not to fear, I can use the camera. I'm gonna just check the post-process settings for Lumen to up the quality a little, pardon me, uh, to up the quality a little bit, global illumination, Lumen. Um, Lumen quality, I'm gonna switch that to four. Uh, same with the reflections, Lumen reflections, four. Alrighty. Now, all we need to do is render. So I'm gonna hit the little clapperboard so I don't have to go running for it. Alrighty. So this is the render settings I'm going to be using today. Again, you can go and check out my actual video on rendering for this. Um, I'm gonna be running to Apple ProRes because I'm not as concerned about this uh, in terms of CG. Uh, I've got anti-aliasing now. <clears throat> because we have no motion blur, the temporal sample count isn't actually gonna work. It's gonna throw an error for you. So you can only use spatial sound, sample count. So I've got 16 set for that. Um, I've also enabled render engine warm-up time. Um, so this runs pretty quickly, but that'll just get like the crowds and the um, traffic and stuff moving before we actually start capturing frames. Uh, the camera node in this instance is actually pointless. Um, game overrides, this just disables streaming, texture streaming and LODs. And it also, again, switches our game mode to like the movie pipeline game mode um, and enables cinematic quality settings. Lastly, output, um, I've got 3840 by 1920, because um, we're doing two by one and so, uh, it'll be in 4K, 3840, I'll just double, yeah, 1920. I had to double check. Alrighty. Um, everything else we're gonna leave the same. I'm gonna hit accept. Uh, gonna make sure everything is saved, just to be sure, and then hit render local. And have a glass of Pepsi Max while that loads. I'm then going to drag and drop my video file, here it is, into Resolve, like that. Uh, yeah, whatever. Um, I think by default it's gonna play back slowly, or not at all. Um, what we're going to then do is right click it in Resolve at least, and find the uh, clip attributes. There it is. All right. I, I believe this here is the frame rate. Um, I'm going to just slip 24. And okay, and now that will then play back at 24 frames a second. So we should have a sped up video. Now, what we should end up with is some sped up video. And it doesn't quite look like the metahumans are running correctly. Let's have a look. That's weird. Some of them are working fine and then others aren't. Okay, so perhaps rendering at a fa a faster frame rate might uh, be beneficial in this case. Um, so maybe we do 4 FPS or something like that. Um, that could probably work. Um, other options you can do is go ahead and uh, add some camera moves and stuff like that. Maybe even a time of day shift, all that sort of goodie. Alrighty, cool. So hopefully that uh, is cool. I'll probably put some more videos rendered out over the screen while I'm talking. Uh, if you like it, uh, subscribe, I guess, to see more. Um, hopefully, uh, yeah, hopefully I haven't actually stepped on anyone's toes by making this video. I'd hate to find out the cre original creator had already done a tutorial on it, but if not, then this is how you do it.